A new Quinnipiac poll showing former President Donald Trump and President Biden in a statistical tie, even after Trump's indictment. And ABC's Jonathan Carl had this reaction to that. A poll from Quinnipiac on a, on a possible Biden-Trump match matchup puts Biden at 48 percent, Trump at 44 percent. This is a poll, again, uh, taken largely after the indictment. Uh, I mean, that's got to make you a little nervous. That's within the margin of error. That is a statistical tie. So what does that say about yeah. Biden if what, he's what barely it? beating no, or in some polls it's, actually it's losing? A, it's Ah, Fox News contributor Joe Concha joins us now. Joe, I thought that was a good line of questioning by Jonathan Carl. What does that say about Joe Biden? And then Donna Brazil said, well, it shows that our country is very divided. What do you have to say about it? Well, you know, that shock comes from Jonathan Carl, as you noted, who found plenty of time, Carly, to write two books about Donald Trump that were overwhelmingly negative, but can't seem to find the time to write a book about the current president and Joe Biden, where, trust me, as someone who wrote a book about Joe Biden, there's plenty of material to work with. Overall, you look at the real clear politics average, and what that is is basically an average of major polls across the country. It shows Donald Trump leading Joe Biden at this point, because maybe just maybe, people aren't happy that their wages still aren't keeping up with inflation, that crime is out of control in major cities across uh, cities and towns across the country, that, that the border is anything but secure, that education in this country has gone sideways with test scores at a 30-year low, and maybe they see China being emboldened by our weakness overseas, and they simply don't want a sequel to what has largely been an absentee presidency and vice presidency. And Jonathan Carl and others in the political media, they, they live in a bubble, an elitist bubble, Todd, and simply do not want to get out and talk to Americans outside of New York or Washington. And that's why they're so shocked when they see poll results like this, because maybe also they see the investigation, the indictments of Donald Trump as politically motivated and not based in anything that actually has anything to do with the law. So we'll see where it goes from here. But expect this. If Donald Trump and Joe Biden end up being the rematch, we're probably going to see poll results that show that's basically a dead heat at this point, and it could go either way, just like it could have gone either way in 2020, guys. And Donna Brazil gave the stock generic answer when I'm asked a question and I'm not paying attention, like I'm wandering, my, I'm going to see a squirrel over here, like, well, the country's divided. She gave that answer when the answer is actually way more specific. Those numbers show the American people don't want Joe Biden. To your point. Uh, meantime, Mike Pence yeah. confronting NBC's Chuck Todd over the media pushing Trump Russia collusion. Watch. Chuck, the independent counsel found that the investigation into Russian collusion should never have been initiated. And yet we lived through two and a half years of a constant barrage. Uh, on, on your network, on the cable network associated with you, and many of the other mainstream media suggesting that there was Russian collusion. We had public officials that said there was evidence of collusion. Never happened. And, of course, Chuck Todd pushing back. So, Joe, what's it going to take for the mainstream media to finally, years later, admit their outsized role in pushing that hoax? Hmm. Waterboarding, probably, Todd. I, I think that's the only thing that's actually going to have anything that results in any contrition, any uh, apology. And look, when Republicans go and meet the press, it's not to be interviewed. It's to be interrogated and debated w with the moderator, in this case, Chuck Todd, always taking the side and using talking points from the Democratic National Committee. That sounds you hear from time to time on Sunday mornings. That's not a train going by. It it's the late, great Tim Russert turning over in his grave because when he moderated that program, which is the longest running in television history, he was tough but fair to lawmakers from both sides of the aisle. Chuck Todd, meanwhile, is hostile to any conservative guest, inhospitable uh, or hospitable to those from the Democratic side. So his forced retirement cannot come soon enough. Mm. And that, that's all I have to say in the matter. Anyway, happy Father's Day, by the way, guys. Uh, I, I believe that uh, Todd we still have celebrated a minute and 15 yesterday uh, with his you kids. Go. Yeah, Joe? where are you go? Actually, I have one more question for you uh, in a time we have left. Uh, we were just right. reporting that uh, uh, Ron DeSantis is going to be out in California. He's been spending time in Iowa and New Hampshire, and now he's going to the state where he's been famously battling with the governor there. What do you think about that? 
I think that that could be a preview of a presidential matchup one day, right? Because if the choice is between, hey, make America California and make America Florida, uh, boy, that's one heck of a debate based on very basic, basic issues around, do you like taxes? Do you like homelessness, poverty, 10 cities, uh, crime being high or low, and you go down the line? Most people are leaving California for places like Florida. So uh, yeah. DeSantis versus Newsom, boy, we'd like to see that one day. Anyway, I got to fix my clock. Sorry about that. I thought we were out of time before. <laughs> it's okay. it's okay. Tuesday. Well, now, happy keep Father's you for Day. As long as we possibly can. Aw, oh, Joe, happy I, Father's Day to you, too. I will accept You're your. You're too beautiful, kids. I will accept your happy Father's Day now yes. that we're 15 seconds away from the end of our show. Happy Father's Day to you, my friend. Yes. It, it was a nice day yesterday, right? It was, to, it was to have a Father's Day party, which I hosted. So it was uh, all fun, guys. Good so stuff. anyway, all right, now, now we I have gotta to go. go. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.